and welcome to another Ink and Paint Club uh, movie review. Uh, my name is JD, and with me is the Ginger Avenger himself, Kyle. It's me, I'm Kyle. <laughs> you sure are. Um, even though it's like two weeks after the fact, uh, Kyle and I are finally going to talk about Sausage Party, because you all want to know what we think about that. Yeah, I think Kubo is a bit more important. Yeah, I think that took precedent. Um, so if you haven't listened to our Kubo review, go listen to that because I liked that movie. Yeah, it was it was tits. Kyle, were you on that one? Yes. Oh, that's right, because Melanie wasn't on that one. Yes. Sorry, it's like one thirty a.m. over here, and I've been up since eight o'clock this morning, so I'm very tired. So I might be a little out of it. I apologize. Uh, so yeah, we're going to talk about Sausage Party, uh, which is um, an R-rated animated film from Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg, um, who have done many movies like Knocked Up and pretty much anything Seth Rogen's been in in the last 10 years. <laughs> all, the, all the Oscar winners. Oh yeah, super bad and all that, all that good shit. Um, so... This plot, the, the plot of this movie is interesting. <laughs> I will give them that much. Um, it basically centers around a grocery store filled with sentient food, or you know, the food is sentient to themselves, I guess. Uh, and basically, they see humans as these gods that will take them off to the great beyond, as they call it, or right? Yeah. Okay. I I, I saw this movie like two weeks ago, so <laughs> I'm trying to do this from memory. Um, and they be uh, the main character Frank, who, uh, voiced by Seth Rogen, who is a hot dog. So they keep calling a sausage for some reason. It's just um, to fit I get the fucking title. Yeah, exactly. It's like they're very obviously hot dogs, but they keep calling them sausages just like so fit the fucking title of the movie. Um, he he learns that um, that the humans are not taking the food off to food heaven, but instead taking them off to be murdered, and uh, it gets really graphic. Um, I think it was... Their whole thing was, it was almost like pets being picked up at a pet store. Like, they were gonna... Their vision was getting, like, petted and played with and pampered and all this shit. And instead, puppy mills. Yeah. (laughs) That's depressing. Puppy mills are sad. Don't support those people. Uh, Um... So yeah, that's the basic conceit of this movie, uh, and it's all about Frank trying to convince the rest of the grocery store food that um, they're not going to heaven, but they're going off to be murdered. Um, all the while trying to bang his... <laughs> yeah, and, and it's a through line where he's just trying to have sex of the whole movie. Um, so Kyle, you do not have strong feelings for... Or you have strong feelings, just not positive strong feelings for this movie. <laughs> yeah, that, I would say that's pretty accurate. What air air your grievances with with the with the audience? I don't know. I just didn't really find it all that funny. No. Yeah. <laughs> what What about it? Didn't you find funny? I don't know. It was just so like stereotypical adult humor, where it's just like I've seen it. It just feels like been there, done that to me okay. I mean like I, I, one, one of the yeah. jokes um, that I think was like way been there done that was the whole Hitler thing where he's like let's kill the Jews <laughs> and it's like I've seen that before I've seen that like 10 years ago <laughs> so oh, I'm like I didn't, I didn't think all the jokes were all that sauerkraut funny sauerkraut Hitler yeah um, okay, so before the uh, before the review, you were telling me that you know you didn't have um, you know very positive reaction to this movie, and I have a theory as to why you may have not been as receptive to this. Because um, Kyle, you didn't see this with a, um, a, a like a big audience like I did. Um, I mean, I went when I went and saw I went I went and saw it with a packed theater. Um, and I feel like, and I feel like this lived a lot of movies, um, where I'll go in the theater and it's dumb as hell, and um, 
you know, I'll I'll have a I'll laugh and have a good time with it. But if I watch it at home by myself, I won't nearly find it as funny. And I think a lot of humor um, depends on like crowd mentality. Because I feel like if I went and saw Sausage Party, like if I had rented it and just watched it at home by myself like you did i probably wouldn't find it nearly as funny and i probably won't find it as funny if i go watch it again um well i mean i don't know because i've watched stuff like family guy with um like full family where it's like mm -hmm. you know grandparents uncle aunt that kind of stuff and i mean they're laughing their asses off and i'm they're like stone-faced i i mean it might be true it might not be i just i don't know <laughs> I just, for me, a lot of people are like, oh, this is un untapped territory, that kind of crap, the whole R-rated adult, yeah, whatever. But, I mean, ever since Flash cartoons existed, like, a cartoon character saying the F-word doesn't have the same appeal. So. Yeah, especially in, especially in this day and age with, like, Adult Swim and just all the shit that, you know, like, go, like you said, like, goes on the internet or, like, you know, it's on TV, what they can get away with now. Yeah, just profanity in cartoons really isn't that big a deal. Yeah, but that's kind of what it's being, like, held up for. That's why I'm just like, oh, okay. Well, I think it's being held up in the sense that it's got all the celebrity backing and it's getting this wide release. Um, and there's been other movies like that, like... Um, like, well, sorry, I blanked for a second. Like, you had Fritz the Cat back in the day, and you had the South Park movie, and I've never watched Helen back, but you did. Um, oh, yeah. It goes into that review. Oh, yeah, it was such a... It wasn't that bad of a movie, according to some, but no, it was fucking terrible. It was an awful movie. But, um, I, I think Sausage Party is getting praised for doing that because it's got you know all this backing it's getting the wide release so it's getting more public uh recognition more so than the other um, sounds about right i don't know yeah. like i've watched a few i haven't watched all of seth rogan's movie but i saw the interview around christmas time last year and it was just like to me that wasn't really all that funny either but, yeah, I didn't really like the interview too much. I mean, it was alright, but, like, the, it seemed like, eh. The only thing that kind of made me laugh was, like, the Katy Perry thing, because it was kind of dumb. That was funny. Yeah. But with with a movie like this, where it just didn't even... Where nothing really clicked, that's what it seemed like. It yeah. kind of sucks where you have a comedy that just doesn't make someone laugh. But what, <laughs> what gets me, too, is... um. I don't know, like like you said, we kind of live in a world where this stuff happens a lot, so seeing, um, I guess, like, would you call it fake gore, since no one's really bleeding or nothing? Um. I mean, seeing all these people die, it's just like, yeah. I've seen it worse on Super Jail, like, does it have... <laughs> Super Jail's fucked up. <laughs> I know, but you see what I mean, where it's just like, I, yeah. it, it feels like been there, done that. Um, the story's not all that great either, but I, I just feel like, oh, the bad guy's a douche, ain't that funny? It's so funny, he's a literal douche, it's just like, nah, I don't I, know, man. I, I, for, for the listeners out there, I don't want it to seem like, I mean, Kyle obviously doesn't like this movie, I mean, <laughs> I will say... I was laughing all the way through this movie, um, because there's some days where like the low, like the most lowbrow, obvious humor just gets to me. Um, so I thought the fact that like the do like a douchebag character is a literal ladies douche, <laughs> I, thought, I thought was actually kind of funny. And like um, a dude, bro. yeah, he was totally a, he was only a frat boy. Uh, so I thought that was actually kind of funny. Um, and I think a lot of, um, you know, you know, there's a lot of funny moments in here. I, <laughs> the humor in this movie is very, it relies on a lot of stereotyping. 
Like l- every food is a literal stereotype. I think, like there's I think a- that was another thing where it's like I've seen it before. Yeah, like <laughs> you have a Jewish bagel, or you have like an Arab uh, falafel thing, or you have <laughs> they have literally have an Indian chief, which is fire water. Or <laughs> The one that really got me was like, oh my god, this is horrible, is um, <laughs> the the box of grits they made a black person. Yeah. It's like, Jesus Christ, guys. That was Craig Robinson. It was Craig Robinson. That's the thing. There's, I, I feel like this movie wouldn't have gotten, like I said, has so much celebrity backing because there's like, everybody is in this movie. You've got like Seth Rogen and Kristen Wiig and Michael Sarah and Jonah Hill and Craig Robinson and Bill Hader and Sama Hayek and probably a bunch of, and Nick Kroll and more people I'm probably forgetting. <laughs> um, but there's just so many people in here. Um, okay. And one thing I do want to give, I am really kind of impressed uh, with Michael Sarah not being this like quiet, awkward, uh, wine baby anymore <laughs> it kind of seemed uh, like he was typecast as that as the little guy but i'm when you watch earlier michael Sarah movies and you can see a, i mean you can kind of see him like back when he was filming scott pilgrim he was kind of starting to come out of it but like he never seemed to emote much for me <laughs> um but with this and the uh trailer for the lego batman movie i feel like he's really learning to emote is he in that <laughs> he's he's gonna be robin in the lego batman movie what the fuck <laughs> i rewatched the trailer the other day i was like oh yeah i forgot about that uh what we'll the review though that comes out next year um yeah so i i definitely i i think everyone did a good job with what they were given oh yeah and edward norton was the bagel which i didn't realize till the end of the movie <laughs> Yeah. OG Hulk. Well, not OG Hulk, but one of the Hulks. Just one oh. of them. <laughs> He's the Hulk before Ruffalo. Yeah. Uh, but I think everyone, I think everyone did a good job with their voicing. You know, as far as celebrities go, um, they kept Kristen Wiig. Kristen Wiig's always a good, good to have in there because I, I think she's funny. They kept but, saying that. Uh, I guess animation-wise, it was supposed to be, like, on par with Pixar, and... I mean, animation-wise, it actually looked pretty damn good. Yeah, I mean, for what I assume, and what I've heard, is a basically minuscule budget, and I really don't want to get into that whole fucking debacle that's behind this, because I do not have the energy for that. (laughs) I kind of want to touch on that myself. Alright, let's do it, fuck it. Because I've heard... I've heard, I guess, maybe the other side speak mm-hmm. out on it and it says sure. the the people that are claiming that didn't get credited and all this stuff were only on the mo- movie for like a week or two or something like that and mm-hmm. you know this is something that i think from what i heard it's been maybe eight years in the make it was kind of a joke I mean, for eight, a couple years and then like well, from what i hear heard seth rogan has been trying to get this movie done for ever but like no studio was going to like green light that i thought it was um, just like a joke for a while and then they're like let's actually do it my my understanding is he's like legitimately to be trying to get this done oh uh, i i don't know but basically if i mean if you haven't heard basically there's this whole thing going around with like some of the artists and animators on sausage party were saying they were cut out of the film and that the work conditions were really bad and they weren't getting paid for overtime um i mean if that's the case i sympathize because that's a shitty situation but obviously with all this behind the scenes kind of stuff i mean you don't know what's who who's just you know mad about something and blowing things out of proportion or if they're telling the truth or yeah i don't know it's hard to say that's whenever this happens like until i see definitive proof i kind of just try to stay out of things well I don't know, it's so easy to make a claim like that and then a bunch of people to follow behind and I I don't like going with mob mentality in that sense. I um Yeah. Cause I mean I I have a friend, maybe a couple, in in the industry and then yeah, if they've only worked on something, they're not gonna want if they worked on it for like a 
a month, a week, something like that, compared to how many script changes happen and this and that, you know, where it's not even the same movie at the point they worked on it. Uh, I don't think that they should get credited either if, if you're going to be off, but that's like just my my own thought on it. If you're... Yeah, I, I was, um, what was I listening to? Oh, uh, I was listening to the Nickelodeon uh, animation podcast a couple weeks ago and they had Butch Hartman on and um, little known fact he worked on uh, An American Tale um, for a short bit but he I guess like back in the day they were still like operating on film um, and he was saying that like you had to like do a certain amount of uh, like so- some odd feet of film in the movie to get credited and he was like just short of that, uh, lit of that, you know, <laughs> line. So he he de- he didn't get any credit in in American Tale, but he did technically work on that. So like you're saying is like, if someone works on a movie for like a week or so, then yeah, but um, yeah, <laughs> kind of interesting to hear that. Yeah, um, but. As far as the animation goes, like you're saying, I mean, it looks really nice um, for you know a lower budget. It's not, it's not TV animation quality, but it's definitely not Pixar. Um, it's I, someone was telling me that they they take a few jabs at Pixar in the background. I guess there's like a bumper sticker that has like a mock Pixar logo on it and something like that. Huh. Um, I, I mean, know, I saw but... it on a shitty camera, so these little right. Easter eggs are kind of <laughs> lost on me. Sure. Sure. Um, I did... <laughs> I do like the way that... Cause, so basically, the whole can see this movie is that this food is sentient, but the people don't see it, because there's, like, some barrier between their kind of realities. Um, I do like that they found a way to breach that, but I think the way they did it seemed like a little outdated, um, or dates itself. Um, cause basically the whole point of this movie is that, um, the only way that the humans can see the food talking is if they get really high on bath salts. <laughs> but <laughs> I feel like the whole bath salts thing is like such a non issue now. Like, like a year or two ago, like that was like the big thing. Um, but that's like and I don't even think it fucking works that way. Like that it makes, probably doesn't it makes you want to fucking eat people's faces off, not <laughs> Florida man. Yeah, not <laughs> but not like go crazy in that sense. Well, I feel like had they used any like a different kind of drug, like if they used like heroin or like fuck it, they just got really high or something. Just take which... one marijuana. Exactly. It's like you can just say you can just say they got really high and they can see the food talking because I'm sure that shit happens. Or like fucking give them shrooms or something. I honestly don't know how drugs work. I could see honest. shrooms doing. Yeah, it. but it seems like using bath salts as the the catalyst to get humans to see the food. Um, uh, it it just it, it kind of dates it in a way, and and it seems outdated now because. Like, bath salts was the big raging thing, like, a couple years ago, but, like, now, like, no one gives a shit. Um, yeah, I can see it. Yeah, but I did think it was funny that they're... <laughs> I, I love the scene where they're just with the stoner, and he like, he just starts taking orders from the food. <laughs> and that's where that's where I, like, was commending Michael Sarah. It's like, he, he actually is kind of, like playing a character for once and not just being himself Michael Sarah, <laughs> and not being um, Seth Rogen as himself in right. every movie <laughs> oh, yeah. no my um, my other problem too is there there was like a lot of senseless death in it I didn't feel like a lot of people should have died I yeah like, like myself yeah and the thing is from like the movie uh or from the trailer sorry um Oh, see, so they showed the the one scene where, you know, the the food like goes home and they're in the kitchen and the the the, the woman starts like fucking just hacking everybody up, 
And I kind of felt like, um, you know, that was going to be the one scene of like food murder and that would have been made it more impactful. But I mean, you see a couple, you see food murder like constantly in this movie. Um, there's like a whole saving private Ryan scene in the, like the first 10 minutes of the movie. I think that was probably um, the coolest part of the movie for me was I did seeing like the that. banana, the banana's face fall off. <laughs> Just fall. And that's the thing. Like they get away with a lot of creative imagery in here. Um, like I like that um like like that like the the private Ryan scene they play they play with a lot of um you know interesting stuff like <laughs> the, like the whole part in private Ryan where the the guy's like trying to put his entrails back into himself it's just a it's just like a jar of spaghetti or something I think it was like chicken noodle soup or something Oh yeah yeah that's what it was uh, so he's trying to put soup back in the can um <laughs> and um I don't know, like the the peanut butter guy smearing his his jelly wife's jelly blood all over himself. <laughs> That's so gross, and I like that, like, um, because at night the the food can get up and go around if they want to, <laughs> kind of like food fight in that sense, I suppose. At night. Um, and <laughs> uh, but I, I like that, like the alcohol section becomes like a giant keg party, or that the like the Latin food section is like a western town. <laughs> Was um, cool. so so like they got a lot of creative ideas here um but you were saying like a lot of the sense of death the the whole end of the movie um where basically the uh they the oh god what am i trying to say here they basically douse an entire grocery store full of people with bath salts like they like dip it into darts and like shoot everybody with them so they can see the food and then basically the food starts fighting back and starts fucking murdering people like <laughs> they coke and mentos a guy to death and they put a bunch of people in freezers and they um, explode a guy with fucking yeah propane. well no they did it with coke and Men- oh yeah they do that's right uh, they fucking shoot a guy off <laughs> <laughs> at like a rocket with a propane tank. So it's um, like hey, it's where you're like, uh-huh. But the guy that hates his job, I kind of relate to him. Oh, he fucking died for being yeah. normal. And that's the thing is like that that had to be the logical conclusion of this movie where the food f- gets back at the people who are murdering and them. And then they die in 2 weeks after spoiling. <laughs> <Lord>. <laughs> um, I did like how they were just like, uh, where they were talking to the stoner and he's like, I'll eat dirt. <laughs> that was kind of yeah, funny. That's, that's kind of what, like, is is a weird takeaway from this movie is like, okay, are we supposed to feel bad for food and not eat? Because it's like, we made the food. I, uh, I, it's, it's one of those movies where you poke too much logic into it, it starts to fall apart. Yeah. And it's like, like, I was starting to think, like, some food like the hot dogs they're like okay they're hot dogs and they're sentient that's that's fine um but then there's like jars of food or like bags of chips but it's the jar or the bag that's sentient not the things inside of it yeah (laughs) it's stuff like that and and like they kind of touched on it a little bit with like they had like a pack of mentos or something and the package of mentos was alive and then he opens his butt and lets all the Mentos out, and all the Mentos inside of him are alive. Yeah. So it's like, ugh. it hurts my brain when I start to think about the logic of this movie. Um, but getting into the end of this movie, after um, they, I, I will say that they have like, I, I did like their attempt to try to make atheism seem less douchey <laughs> um ba- basically frank is trying to tell everybody that um you know they're going off to be murdered uh and like obviously nobody believes them because they want to be you know believe in their gods <laughs> um so it has a nice message about you know belief systems and stuff and i think when they get to that you know it 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 gets a little smart, but it immediately goes into people murder. So, yeah, I don't know. 
Um, but yeah, Kyle, what'd you think about that orgy at the end? Well, <clears throat> for me, it didn't come as a surprise because I fucking read the script when it leaked. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's supposed to be rats in the orgy as well. Oh god. But I don't know. I I know that that was like the big shocker, but it was kind of leaked a little early and. I mean, I didn't know it was coming, so I was surprised by it, but <laughs> I feel like it went on too long. Like, that shit goes on for a good, like, three or four minutes. It was like Conway Twitty. <laughs> it was the Conway Twitty of this movie. <laughs> god, I hate that joke so much. I remember when they played it, like, for five minutes in Family Guy. I'm like, god, that was the worst way to pad runtime. I think that's but... about the time I just fell out, where it's just like, yeah. I'm done. Right, but, um, yeah, so the end of this movie basically just ends with a giant food orgy, literally. Um, like, and I figured something like that was going to happen because, like, the whole movie, uh, f- the Seth Rogen's character and Kristen Wiig's hot dog bun character were, like, trying, like, doing the whole premarital sex thing and, just like, we, we can't tip. we can't have sex just, <laughs> just the tip. Uh, but, uh, so I figured they were going to, like, <laughs> they start to go in, like, to the uh, Top Gun sex scene, <laughs> just parroting that, but then it just, like, immediately goes into a full-blown orgy. You see Hitler getting butt-fucked by a bottle of juice, which I thought that was kind of funny. But, uh, yeah, it's it's very shocking the first time, but it just went on too long. <laughs> it, it, I, I became numb to it about halfway through. <laughs> Uh, so definitely don't take your kids to this. Okay, so the one thing that did legitimately, I wouldn't say piss me off, but like, it kind of felt really lazy to me is how they actually end the movie. With the where they get like Stargate. really meta. W- yeah, they fucking. <laughs> so at the very end of this movie, they were like, oh, hey, we're not actually real. We're just cartoons for these weirdo people and there's like but with, with your voice by Seth Rogen and they get really fourth wall meta with it and it's like we built this stargate for some for no real reason and we're gonna go and get revenge on the animators so that's a thing I just felt like I can believe talking food but I don't believe talking food built a stargate yeah, and then it's like, well, does that set it up for a sequel? Was that just oh, something God. stupid? I don't know. I think it was just something stupid. I really hope they don't make a sequel to this. What, but with as much money is it making right now? I'm sure they're gonna make yeah. a fucking second one. It's yeah. only a matter of time. All right, but I do want to say that I do hope that this opens up the door for more adult animation getting wide releases because we i mean we've seen adult animation in theaters but like nothing on this kind of scale at least in re- like recently um I don't know, so like i was just thinking right now aqua teen hunger force came out in theaters and i saw that in theaters with my dad i did too but not with my dad <laughs> oh yeah he was uncomfortable by that movie I don't remember but, um, too much from it. I'm gonna have to watch it again. It's so stupid, but that was back when Aqua Team was like still, you no, know, not past its prime yet. I think that's kind of where I, it stops. But I still love it. I love I love old Aqua Team Hunger Force, but um, I'm hoping that this leads to like more intelligent adult animation. I'm gonna put it that way. Well, I would like more, like, indie stuff. If that makes any sense. Yeah, sure. I would I would like more, like, maybe less big budget stuff. Maybe, like, I don't know. Something with more love and care into it. Like Kubo? Yeah, something like that, but, like, animated. Maybe, like, an animated horror movie would be fucking cool, or, like, you know. Yeah, we we talked about that on another podcast, but, yeah, I really want to see, like, an animated, like, horror movie or slasher movie or something. Just, like, 
cuz you can get real creative with animation than you more more so than you can in real life. Yeah, right? like so, I I know people want to take Pixar down a peg and shit like that, but I kind of want to see different styles. I don't want to see the fucking colored irises and human eyes on things. I kind of want to see you know what I mean. Cartoon- <laughs> cartoons. I want to see cartoons, but I want to see them like like maybe more realistic, more cartoony, something like that. I don't fucking know, man. <laughs> I, I, I get what you mean. I want though. it more mature and not not necessarily uh, humorous for kids. Oh, uh, yes, uh, yeah. Like it, it'd be good if we got like more serious animation. Like, I, I don't know, I, like I'm I'm just thinking. I keep having it in my head, but like a detective movie or something like that, where it's like an actual yeah. serious. Adult I mean, animated. I'm still waiting for that goon movie, so... It's probably never gonna happen, dude. That's never gonna happen. I at least got a t-shirt from the Kickstarter, but that was about it. There you go. Well, at least you got something. I know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I, I hope this leads to better things. Um, but... I, I guess if I can say anything for Sausage Party is that if you find, like, lowest common denominator the denominator kind of humor funny then by god this movie is for you it is the most unapologetically racist and lowbrow comedy movie that i have seen in some time um and sometimes it's a good thing sometimes it's not and i'm sure if i watch this movie again i'm probably not going to find it as funny as i did in the first time because like i said i saw it with a packed theater who, with the intended target audience for this movie, which is probably a bunch of fat stoners. Um, I think that's a great example, though. I saw, <laughs> I saw Finding Nemo in theaters, full packed house, and everyone like this will never fucking. I will never forget that moment. It's just a full packed theater. Everybody's laughing at Ellen making wild noises, and I'm just sitting there. Just like angry, brick stone faced, <laughs> not laughing one bit, and I feel like that was the same with this fucking movie. <laughs> Kyle's a party pooper. A little bit, I guess. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah. If yeah, you so... like, if you like stereotypes, senseless violence, and or if you just need to shut your brain off for an hour and a half, yeah. Then this movie's for you. But if that if you are overly sensitive in any capacity, then please, for the love of God, skip this movie. Yeah, that too. If you if you if you get your fifis hurt pretty easily, then. <laughs> I love that word. I know you do. That's that's why I put it in there for you. But um, yeah. So um. I hope everyone enjoyed this. Uh, be sure to follow us on Facebook where we post animation news most days. Sometimes. Uh, sometimes. Uh, go check out our Twitter because I'm getting better at putting stuff on there. Uh, and follow our, me and Kyle on our pages. And you can find all the links to that in the description. Yeah. Love it. Um, Cut and print. Cut for it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so tired. <laughs> All right, well, I'm gonna go to bed. Uh, we'll uh, we'll be back next week with something. I don't know. All right. All right. Well, good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. We'll see you later. <laughs>